welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. Tim Lucia's Prime Minister rallies the hemisphere to combat COVID-19. CAFA launches tourism health program in St. Lucia. And the community health services are restructured due to COVID-19. Lucia's Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre made his first official out-of-state visit on the weekend, attending the Summit of Heads of State of Latin America and the Caribbean. As we hear from Lisa Joseph, Honorable Pierre used the opportunity to call for a unified approach to combating COVID-19 in the region. The sixth summit of the Community of Latin American and Caribbean States, CELAC, was held September 18 to the 19th, 2021, in Mexico City, Mexico. CELAC is an intergovernmental body comprising 33 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. CELAC was created in December 2011 in Caracas, Venezuela, with a commitment to deepening integration in the hemisphere, ensuring unity, political, economic, social, and cultural diversity of the 600 million people of Latin America and the Caribbean. The summit of heads of state had an urgent atmosphere after not being held for two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Leaders discussed the region's response to the pandemic, as well as the creation of a fund to respond to disasters derived from climate change. St. Lucia's Prime Minister, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, told the summit he firmly believes that CELAC can serve as an important voice for unity and cooperation in the region, particularly on self-sufficiency in health matters, as member states are plagued by the COVID-19 pandemic. Unemployment among our people, especially the youth and women, the threat of climate change that can and has nearly wiped out our entire countries, the failure of the international financial community to recognize our vulnerability and halt the classification of our economies as middle-income countries, particularly now with the crisis of COVID. The unequal financial and trade restrictions placed on our small economies. In this regard, we know the ascension of Costa Rica to the OECD and trust that our issues will be raised in that important body. Since its launch in December 2011, CELAC has helped to advance dialogue among all countries in the region in the areas of social development, education, nuclear disarmament, family farming, culture, finance, energy, and the environment. Prime Minister Pierre noted that consensus building on matters of common interest is imperative as all member states face the same challenges. We need unity, unity to fight the misinformation and vaccinations. St. Lucia believes that unity and integration of the peoples of ECLAC can serve the people of our regions in good stead. We salute the struggles and hope for a speedy resolution of the problems in Venezuela and Cuba. Mr. President, we affirm our commitment to true democracy and call for a peaceful and equitable opportunity for our people to survive and improve the quality of life. St. Lucia believes that regional economic integration provides a common platform for which members can best promote their interests with the rest of the international community. We respect this multilateral, this multilateral system. Honorable Philip J. Pierre indicated that organizations like CELAC share the same philosophy as his administration of putting people first, and as such, he looks forward to meaningful engagement and participation in the hemispheric grouping. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. St. Lucia is one of four countries implementing the Tourism Health Program devised by the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFO. The Tourism Health Program, officially launched in St. Lucia on the 19th of September 2021, aims to improve the region's health, safety and security of visitors and residents alike. The program's overall objective is to bolster the island's capacity to respond to public health threats, improve the health, safety and security of locals and visitors, and to build tourism resilience, reputation and economic sustainability. 
The Caribbean Public Health Agency's Director of Surveillance, Disease Prevention and Control, Dr. Lisa Indah, speaking at the official launch of the program in St. Lucia, explained that the Tourism Health Program, THP, consists of several tools that will not only ensure travelers of a safe and healthy destination, but reinforce travelers' confidence in the Caribbean region. These tools include the Caribbean Travelers' Health Assurance Stamp, the Tourism and Health Information System, this, the Caribbean Travelers Health Mobile App, Regional Guidelines for Response to Travelers' Illness in Hotels and Ships, Capacity Building and Certification, Advanced Food Safety and Sanitation Standards, and Multi-Sector, Multi-Agency Partnerships for Response. When COVID came, we wanted to adapt to COVID and to make sure it's relevant because the key in all of this is to ensure health and safety to build travelers' confidence. If I'm a traveler and I want to travel during COVID, I want to be sure the place where I'm going is safe and that they have measures in place. So we, we develop these different guidelines, guidelines for the food and beverage industry, hoteliers, travelers, ships, resuming travel, the travel bubble. And just last week, um, the, the, tra the in the guidelines for the ships was, you know, endorsed by CARICOM, it was sent out. And even at the heads of government meeting, they spoke about harmonized measures for, for, for cruise ships. Most Caribbean countries depend primarily on the tourism sector as their main revenue earner. It is therefore paramount that they are able to effectively respond to the various shocks which may occur and negatively impact the sector, such as the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister for Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs Honorable Moses Jabatiste expressed his excitement at the launch of the program, adding that it will serve as an additional tool in combating the COVID-19 pandemic and any future health threats to come. The minister pledging his support to the Tourism Health Program asserted that all entities have an important role to play to ensure its success. The COVID-19 pandemic has demanded that we embrace this multi-sectoral approach, and this program is one such example. This will allow us to adequately train, set standards, and implement policy, facilitate the building of productive partnerships, focus on maintaining the health and safety of all patrons, and ensuring visitor confidence in our beautiful island. This program will not only help strengthen our national health security, but also the regional health security. As we continue to work towards a return to normalcy, I want to take this opportunity to implore all to please get vaccinated, follow the protocols, so that we can return to a more normal state of operations. Discussions between CAFA and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States began in 2017 and set the pace for the THP. Director of the OECS, His Excellency Dr. Didicus Jules, Throwing his support behind the program, noted that the support has been formalized by the OECS with the signing of a letter of agreement with CAFA on the 17th of September 2021. The nature of the times in which we find ourselves now require multi-sectoral collaboration. Health cannot do its thing in its own bucket, in its own silo, neither can tourism, neither can the government address and solve these problems by itself. It requires also the private sector. It requires persons in the industry, workers at all levels. I think if there's any lesson from this pandemic is that everyone has a responsibility to play their part in order to ensure that the chain of safety is unbroken. The pandemic has heightened the critical importance of this program and we commend St. Lucia, Mr. Minister, for being the first OECS country to fully commit to the implementation of this program. The Tourism Health Program was launched under the Regional Tourism Health Policy Framework, which was established in 2014 under the guidance of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, the Caribbean Tourism Organization, CTO, and the Caribbean Hospitality and Tourism Association, CHTA. As part of its mandate, the policy aims to ensure an enabling environment for optimal implementation of the Tourism Health Program, THP, which sets the precedence for a healthier, safer tourism industry. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. 
and the official launch of the program serves as a precursor to a number of high-level discussions with key representatives of the health and tourism sectors on the policy direction for the program. The Ministries of Health and Tourism cognizant of the impact of COVID-19 on the tourism industry's sustainability welcomed such a timely and critical intervention. Here's Homa Dimark. The Tourism Health Programme follows a regional tourism policy framework established in 2014. The program's aim is to ensure the health and safety of visitors and locals in the Caribbean tourism sector. The Caribbean Public Health Agency as part of the implementation of the program in St. Lucia on Friday, 17 September, engaged key representatives from the Ministries of Health and Tourism in discussion on the policy direction for the program. Donna Linvite is the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information. The idea today is for us to come together and regroup and ensure that the incoming ministers are very well aware of the program, the benefits of the program, how we can partner with CAFA and how public health plays a major role in tourism's recovery and continuation even post-pandemic. Um, we also meeting today with the objective to determine what are the policies or what are the guidelines that we need to keep on our radar so the ministers are very aware of a framework of safety to, to work within for tourism as well as for us to ensure the public health of our country, St. Lucia. Minister for Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, Honorable Dr. Ernest Hilaire praised Kaffer's intervention as the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic continues to affect St. Lucia's tourism industry. I think it's a really valuable addition to the, the, the work in this region, um, especially when you consider the significance of tourism to our economies mm -hmm. and how critical it is to our development and our progress as a region for us to be able to ensure that we can protect the health of our populations and to protect the health of visitors coming to the country. Um, this is an invaluable um, intervention. And of course, COVID has probably highlighted just how critical having such an intervention um, is. The tourism minister says the government will play its part to ensure the success of the program. I, I think the more we speak of making tourism integrated in the communities to have home accommodation of visitors, the more we speak about offering authentic local experiences in our tourism sector, is the more we'll have visitors, you know, integrating and interacting. Mm -hmm. And the earlier we can see risk and other potential issues arising, the better it is for everyone. Uh, and I think this is a, a very necessary um, program and I'm delighted that we've done so much work and there is a lot more to be done, but we, we are progressing quite nicely. And to be assured um, that the work will continue and we will do all that we have to do um, to make sure the success of the, the, the program. One of CAFA's objectives in country is to provide training on conducting activities in the tourism sector safely. Training to be provided includes a three-day advanced food safety training certification workshop for environmental health workers, hoteliers and restauranteurs from Tuesday 21 September to Thursday 23 September. Tourism industry operators will be resensitized on the tourism health information system and stakeholder consultations will be held on cruise ship surveillance assessment on Thursday, 23 September. The stakeholders anticipate that the various consultations will engender a greater level of understanding of the importance of the benefits of the Tourism Health Program and the Tourism Health Information System. The agencies will also identify a clear roadmap for strategic marketing to allow for a healthier, safer and more sustainable tourism industry. For the Government Information Service, I'm Humidi Mark, reporting. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs has been responding to the surge in COVID-19 cases associated with the fourth wave, which commenced on July 25, 2021. Principal Nursing Officer Julieta Fedricasia says the routine services continue to be delivered. The current COVID-19 situation has placed severe pressure on the already limited staff complement. Additionally, facilities have been severely impacted, given that some staff members have periodically been placed in quarantine or isolation. In response to this situation, 
and to improve efficiency in the delivery of care, the Ministry of Health shall temporarily close the following community wellness centers. Lage Babuno, Tiroche Castries, Delce Souffre, and Forsinja Souffre. Clients of these wellness centers are asked to access care at another wellness center within the district. During the closure of these wellness centers, the health aides will continue to provide screening services within the communities. Additionally, the ministry has taken the decision to scale down the services offered at select wellness centers. This will allow for the reassignment of staff to facilities and sites with higher service demand, including vaccination sites and respiratory clinics. Core health services will still be provided at these wellness centers, which include the continuation of diabetes, hypertension, and other chronic care services, as well as maternal and child health services. The clinic days for these wellness centers are as follows. Canaris Wellness Center, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Vana Wellness Center, Mondays and Tuesdays. Etang's Wellness Center, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Saltibus Wellness Center Tuesdays, the Grace Wellness Center on Wednesdays, the Tiroche Miku Wellness Center on Mondays and Thursdays, and the Mongoj Wellness Center on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. All scheduled doctor's clinics will remain as per schedule. This scale down will be for a period of two weeks in the first instance, commencing Monday, September 20th, 2021, and at the end of the period, an assessment will be done to determine the need for its continuity. The Ministry of Health recognizes that these changes may be inconvenient for some members of the public, but requests patience and cooperation as we attempt to meet the healthcare service needs to respond to the COVID-19 situation in St. Lucia. Principal Nursing Officer Julieta Frederick Cassius. The Department of Economic Development is St. Lucia's national designated authority on the Green Climate Fund. On September 3, 2021, the department officially launched the process of developing a new climate change investment program for St. Lucia. The program, dubbed Transforming Finance to Unlock Climate Action in the Caribbean, is led by the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, which will serve as the Green Climate Fund, GCF, accredited entity. The program aims to scale up the investment in climate action among micro, small, medium enterprises and homeowners by improving their access to credit via the St. Lucia Development Bank, SLDB, while also enhancing the capacity of the SLDB and other financial services stakeholders in St. Lucia to better understand, assess and manage climate-related risks in their lending and operations. The program Transforming Finance to Unlock Climate Action in the Caribbean will be developed over the next 9 to 12 months and is expected to be ready for submission to the GCF by the third quarter of 2022. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. Are you tired of eating unhealthy and overprocessed foods? or the hassle to procure fresh fruits and vegetables? We at the St. Lucia Marketing Board want to ensure you receive the best fresh produce St. Lucia has to offer with the newly introduced fruit and vegetable box. We put together a great seasonal selection of locally produced fruits and vegetables that can be delivered directly to you. The box prices range from $65 to $140. If you would like to customize your box or add additional products, you may contact us at 452-3214 or 453-1162. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Tan Janelle, Monsieur Madame, Department of Responsibility, 
pour information en gouvernement cette le ci ça c'est GIS à ce moment télévision nationale pays NTN capable de nouvelle en créole président Prime Hutchinson en continuation visitation pour ces divers euh, départements qui ont ministère ministre qui responsabilité pour affaires sécurité service public travaux et situation concernant affaires femmes et non pays là ça c'est honorable docteur Virginia Albert Poyat te visiter facilité prison bordelais vendredi passé le 17 septembre 2021 côté trouvé information hors les officiers prison concernant diverses situations qui ca existé en facilité prison ça là docteur Poyat euh, promet pour faire ça IP pour encourager le gouvernement pour adresser ces diverses nécessités là Durant la visitation, le ministre a trouvé en chaque ces chambres de prison, là, côté il trouvait des détails, toutes ces toutes ces toutes ces informations, ce qui a affecté yo présentement et que en quelle façon yo a opéré. En discussion, et puis directeur Bordelais, c'est Hillary Holman, Dr. Poyot parlait de manière il trouvait concerné et puis les grandes quantités de prisonniers qui en facilité à présent à prison ça là présentement et que quelle façon qui possible pour baisser les mots ça là selon ministre Poyot c'est pas yon yon task qui est facile pièce tout bonnement mais yon effort ni pour faire pour réduire à ceci quantité jeunes garçons qui ca trouver yo en prison yon qui sept fois plus haut qui femme et jeune fille alors il est nécessaire pour yon sacrifice fait pour essayer corriger situation ça là et pour décourager jeunes hommes pour engager en activité crime à cette ci Directeur Bordelais Hillary Homan déclare qu'il n'y a présent 20 ans depuis la prison Bordelais en existence et le bâtiment Jaffélé en plusieurs côtés et aussi l'année en pile ça qui brise ou est placé. M. Homan fait comprendre que Magoué y pense à ministre là et puis on liste qu'à montrer toute nécessité de prison. Ils savent l'année l'autre ça qui est trop plus nécessaire en pays que le gouvernement ne peut adresser. Par exemple, chemin pont l'hôpital en parmi l'autre alors oui sous gouvernement très limité mais il dit quand même et qu'a chebé espoir que gouvernement qu'a trouvé une façon pour essayer courager situation ça là ministre sécurité honorable docteur Virginia Albert Poyot j'ai fait arrangement pour une discussion et puis cabinet des ministres gouvernement pour garder en qui meilleure façon yo peut assister bordel Premier ministre cette ci honorable Philippe J. Pierre, qui a assisté à grand conférence les chefs gouvernement des pays de l'Amérique latine et caraïbes là, samedi passé, le 18 en mois de septembre 2021 en pays Mexique. Conférence là, c'était pour cimenter position ce pays là en parmi les grands pays international en bataille contre la maladie corona. La tenue alliance qui était formée contre la maladie en janvier 2010. Diwan Kofonsa la Premier ministre Pierre fait un appel pour l'année plus coopération et unité en parmi en parmi ces pays là selon le Premier ministre la unification en affaire économique pour juin qui présente un stage côté tout membre ça exposé l'intérêt pour le reste commun international Premier ministre Pierre dit que malgré cette ci c'est un petit pays il quand même ni même quantité espoir et aspiration qu'on n'est pas de peuple au Liban latin là qui a gardé pour yon mère et bon qualité la vie. Premier ministre là dit que le gouvernement qui a créé l'organisation ça là ça pour tuer yon voix très important pour unification et coopération en région. Ministre là dit que il a gardé pour délibération à sa façon pour ce pays ça là opérer à son compte yon même en ligne de santé en particulier à d'un temps côté à présent euh en temps à présent côté ces pays à ba pèse maladie corona premier ministre Pierre qui cette le signe espoir qui unité et unification peuple prison qui porter en lot bénéfice conférence là c'était le 18 en mars septembre 2021 en pays Mexique Yonan se pli go grec an kultou an set le si, twe pase, jedi pase, li 16 an mwad septam 2021. Arthur Jacobs, se te yon mapipi 
an activity culture at the art as it was see. Les officiers ont les fraternités, fraternité culture et fondation pour développer la culture. Dit la mort jex qu'on tout te simé kouye, touche yo en pile et se yon ki yo pa kaye sa replace. Jex, depuis en jeunesse li, te toujours ni l'amour pour théâtre et ka de gwe y découvè habilité et capabilité pour fabriquer divers articles en service bois y te formidable a kweati osi pou servi wash pou fami divers artik. Afe Jacobs we prezente set li si an plizye spektak kulturel, an plizye lot peyi a kare blan. Pe ekzap, produksyon teyat pou Kare Fester an lani 1972 an Guyana, ek 1979 an Kuba, osi ite vizite Boston an Amerik pou te apwen l'istwa de peyi Egypt. Jex fe gwan po gwe An ba djid ek direksyon Roderick Walcott. Yo si pa ofome a produksyon te yat pa Sir Derrick Walcott. I podwi plizye emaj set li siye ki te ni gwan lone kan Sir Garnet Gordon, Carl Lacobinye, Sir John Compton, Sir Derrick Walcott, Sir Arthur Lewis, a pa mi lot. An lane 2018, Arthur Jacobs touve medaj de gwan lone an lo. Sa nou konet kon Saint Lucia Medal of Merit Gold pou gwan kontribisyon pou kultur ek teyat an set li si. A pa di sa, i te cha trouve plizye lot pla de lone pou tout sa i te cha akompli. Nou an GIS ek NTN ka se pati e pi Afa Jacobs ek mwen osi ki se te yon boti kamarad. I bo mwen pil konsey an taki pasi. Ek sa se kote nou atwa bout nou vela, mese medam, mou ka remesyo otan pou ka gade, mou ka bo yon invitasyon pou jene pi mou anko si di kose ve la vi, le ga yi preso tou lot nou vel akwe. Ola preso, mou ka vye preso tou jene. Mesi a pou primus, we now take a look at the weather. Sunrise Tuesday, 5.53 a.m. Winds will be blowing from between the east, southeast, and south near 8 miles per hour or 13 kilometers per hour, becoming lighter, variable, or calm at times. Weather generally fair skies, becoming cloudy at times with a few light showers and a slight chance of isolated thunderstorms. Seas slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms over the northern leeward islands. Elsewhere, generally fair skies with a few brief showers. Moisture and instability associated with tropical storm Peter will continue to cause cloudiness, showers and thunderstorms, mainly over the northern leeward islands during the forecast period. Tropical storm Peter is moving toward the west-northwest near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. On the forecast track, the center of Peter is expected to pass north of the Leeward Islands and Puerto Rico by Tuesday. Maximum sustained winds are near 50 miles per hour or 85 kilometers per hour, with higher gusts. Interest in the northern Leeward Islands, Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico should continue to monitor the progress of the system. Tropical Storm Rose is moving toward the northwest near 16 miles per hour or 26 kilometers per hour. Maximum sustained winds are near 40 miles per hour or 65 kilometers per hour with higher gusts. Rose is expected to remain over the open Atlantic during the next five days. A tropical wave located over the far eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. This system has a medium chance of tropical cyclone formation during the next five days. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Chanel Marvel.